Hey there guys, so welcome to the beginning of the video. Uh, right now, um, what I'm doing in the video is just finishing, finishing up the modeling of the Mage Pillar, is what I call it. Lame ass name, I know, but still. Um, and I'm just adding bumps, as you can see, and then tuning them out, kind of just like adding them as part of the object. And This is what it originally looked like and turn off those stupid cap locks, you know. Um, but yeah, started out as a simple object and I added points where I needed to add them to keep the um, to keep the shape for when I, you know, add more polys to it. And of course, beforehand, I did UV it. As you can see here, there's the UV, but the UV for some reason, some reason didn't stay when I decided to make it poly so I could edit it. So, this is just me sculpting it from here on in. And uh, I'm using the Trim Smooth tool. And also along with that, I'm using an Alpha. Uh, currently, I'm not sure. Let me just zoom in on the video real quick. So right now, we are at 1.5 million polys. And um, I'm, j I'm just trying to get as much detail in this as I can before I auto uh, topo it and then bring it into Maya to UV it again. And as you can see, there's a ton of detail. I'm just adding bumps and breaks and uh, weathering wherever I can. And in a few seconds, I'll show you the reason why I add the random bumps. Because it's actually it's actually pretty cool what I do, and of course sometimes we have to undo our mistakes. As you can see right there, yeah, I used the smooth tool to fix the mistake that I made. The detail on this thing is pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. Uh, but the final result in the end actually turned out to be okay which I was surprised about. Anyway, I'm going to cut out here and the rest of the uh, the video after this one, the next clip will have audio. So enjoy. There's the bumps, I gave it an ass. Look at that ass.
Alright guys, so after the sculpt finished, uh, I brought it into Maya, I uh, smoothed it out, and then I created an automatic UV mapping. I went through and did all of this nice little stuff, and I actually got a good UV out of it. It's not the best UV in the world, but it's enough that I have a rock. And this pillar, it um, it looks better than I thought it would, and it kept most of its detail, as you can see, except for the bottom's kind of softer than it was. But in the end, it looked it looks pretty good. And um, I'm gonna bring it in the engine, and I'll do a video of that as soon as it's done. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Alright guys, final result time. As you can see, I've brought it inside of the engine. I've brought it in the engine, sorry. And, um... It looks exactly how I wanted it to look. Not bad at all. As the UVing went well, there was a few issues. Nothing major. But I'm starting to get used to UVing now. So let's take a closer look. Now I'm just going to add the runes, or uh, a runic look to it, if you will. I guess that's the best way to put it. And I think I'm going to put the runes going up this way. So, and uh, add a nice normal map to them, and it should hopefully look okay. I just want to test it real quick. Um, Let's think. I need to go Google Runes. Rune language texture rune alphabet on aged. Yeah, I just want a texture. Here, we're gonna put this over here so you have something to see. That looks nice. That looks even better. Maybe I should put this on it. Ugh, it's from Second Life. I'll give it a second life. Literally, I'm about to give it a second life. <laughs> Alright, so we are going to just grab as much of it as we can. But since there's no bottom, we're gonna need to make this a little bit messy looking. Just for kicks. That should be good. And copy what's visible. Paste as new layer. Delete the old one. Literally delete the layer itself. And we're gonna just center it. And we're going to auto crop the image. So that's technically the power of two. That works. And export as a PNG. Because we don't want to lose any quality that we just gave it. Now I'm not going to do anything super duper to it. That would be a bit crazy, but we are going to go a bit crazy, are we? We're going to crazy bump, and that one looks the best. Just intensify. There, that should do it. 
save all textures. Nordic rune. And we're just going to put it all in there. Now we got to put this in game. So we're going to go like this. We're going to grab its texture. This is what we're going to be editing. I'm going to check that on the second page for now. So we're going to custom models. We're going to put textures and import the entire mess. Not from there. Wrong picture folder. From here. And here. I accidentally totally brought in the wrong one, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Oops. All right, let's try that again. Well, we'll just grab all of this. Seems to be an issue importing the last one. It's not showing. And we'll just import that. All right, so we got that done. Now we're going to bring it in here. We just need the normal map. And I'm correct, that's the ambient inclusion texture. All right, good. I gotta bring this over here. Actually, I better do a LARP. Primary texture A. Primary texture B. With the constant controlling the alpha. And the LARP node goes there. And we're just going to add these two together. See how that pans out. And we're going to set this to a whopping 0 0.9. You can see the issues with the text string right there. Okay, so how am I going to get you in there? I don't want you to tile. I will have to figure this out for another day. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Alright guys, as you can see in front of you, here is the finished product. And um definitely need to still get better at UVing, but maybe I should have put some freaking palm trees in here. I don't know. It looks good. Minus the fact that there's grass in the sky. <laughs> I don't know what this world is smoking, but it's got some issues. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I may as well put this rock in the description below.